Welcome everybody, Pastor Scott here, Peace of Christ Church Online, wherever you are and whenever you are watching this as well. It's Happy Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, and then of course it kicks off a season of Easter as well. So welcome to worship today as we celebrate that Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, Alleluia. Let's start today with a well-known, maybe not to you, but maybe very familiar hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. Sons of man and angels sway, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply, Alleluia. Lives again our glorious King, Alleluia. Where, where, O oh, death, is now thy sting, Alleluia. Dying once he all doth save, Alleluia. Where the victory, O grave, Alleluia. Loving, love's redeeming work is done, Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won, Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him rise, Alleluia. Christ has opened paradise, Alleluia. Soar we now where Christ has led, Alleluia. Falling our exalted head, Alleluia. May like him, like him we rise, Alleluia. Ours across the grave, the skies, Alleluia. This Easter Sunday, we hear this call to worship. May it be yours as well today. This is a new day, a day of marvels and miracles, a day to rejoice in what God has done. Yesterday was filled with too many worries and too little faith. On this Easter day, we hear some folks saying, Mary, don't you weep. This is a new day, a day of marvels and miracles, a day to rejoice in what God has done. Yesterday was filled with too much criticism and too little affirmation. Today, Martha, don't you moan. This is a new day, a day of marvels and miracles, a day to rejoice in what God has done. Yesterday was filled with too many questions and too few answers. This is Easter, Resurrection Day. Dry your tears and shout for joy. Jesus is not dead, he is alive. God has conquered death and Jesus has canceled sin. This is indeed a new day. Leap for joy. Amen. We turn to our first scripture reading today in our Hebrew scriptures, or the Old Testament passage, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. Hear these words. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall enjoy 
long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will, shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word from the Hebrew scriptures. Thanks be to God. Amen. We turn in song one more time here. We, we look at the day of resurrection. The day of de resurrection, her tell it out abroad. The Passover of gladness, the Passover of God. From death to life eternal, from earth unto the sky. Our Christ hath brought us over with hymns of victory. Our hearts be pure from evil, that we may see aright the Lord in rays eternal of resurrection light, and listening to his accents may hear so calm and plain, his own all hail and hearing may raise the victor strain. Now we turn to our song of preparation. This is the word Alleluia. There's many different renditions of Alleluia. This is not uh, perhaps the Leonard Cohen one that some of you might be expecting when I said Alleluia, but it is a beautiful song, a beautiful classic hymn nonetheless, as we prepare our hearts for the message today. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. He's my Savior, He's my Savior, He's my Savior, He's my Savior. He's my Savior, He's my Savior. He's my Savior, He's my Savior. He is worthy, He is worthy, He is worthy, He is worthy. He is worthy, He is worthy, He is worthy, He is worthy. I will praise Him, I will praise Him, I will praise Him, I will praise Him. I will praise him, I will praise him, I will praise him, I will praise him. Alleluia. Now we turn in our gospel for today's lesson. The gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses, excuse me, chapter 24 in Luke, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood besides them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But those words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. As we prepare for this message today, let us come together in prayer at this time. We heard a couple of scriptures. We 
some of these Easter hymns and gatherings. And then we pray this prayer of confession before our God. Holy, holy, holy God, as we draw near to the mouth of the tomb and find the stone rolled away, as we bend with racing hearts to look inside, we are struck still. All our words are as prattle before the awe and majesty of your power. In silence we bow before you, for we have fallen short of the glory for which you created us. Lord, have mercy upon us and make us worthy to be called your own. Let's take a moment in silent confession now. Now hear these words of assurance and pardon. In the empty tomb, God declares that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing we have done or left undone, no one whom we have been or failed to be. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. So friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. When we say, Alleluia, Alleluia, Amen. Let us share in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray, which is, of course, the Lord's Prayer. Please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We Westerners, sometimes it seems, this Western world, right? Western culture and so forth. We seem to have a difficult time with any kind of mystery, at least for too long. Yet while we get answers, we also have some mystery on this very day when we celebrate this Resurrection Sunday. Christ was, Christ is, Christ will be, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ will come again. This concept, this mystery, even when we get clarity and some answers of where Jesus was going, this culminating experience here, also transcends time and space and even words. We aren't called to make Easter worship simply a spectacle, but we are called to worship. We're called to invite people to worship the one who conquered death. We might find that there's arguments and, and debate abound about Resurrection Sunday itself, which may not be helpful when we ultimately are here to celebrate. Scholar Amy Jill Levine herself says that it's like trying to talk someone into or out of love. And of course, this is a very different kind of love altogether that transcends all else. We aren't called to prove the resurrection, but we're called to proclaim it. Jesus is risen, therefore forgiveness is real. There's hope there, and there's an element of heaven in all of this. This notion that we know that God is with us here and now, promising this blessed hereafter and living into this kingdom now with us, not to wait. There's a chance to see what Nicholas Walterstorff says as an examination of our God-forgiven regrets, that God forgives, but there are things that we wish we'd said or done or not. And what do we do with those regrets? He writes, I shall live with them and I shall allow them to sharpen the vision and intensify the hope for that great day when we can all throw ourselves into each other's arms and say, I'm sorry. And then the God of love will surely grant us such a day. Love needs that, to know this kind of love. We aren't called to tell a better story. We're called to tell this story. This is the story of the, of the past 2,000 years, which transcends time as well, that Easter isn't just about us, points us to God's great love and great power, and we are invited into it. We're part of this. Barbara Brown Taylor writes that Christianity is the only world religion that confesses a God who suffers. And while that's not a popular idea, even among Christians, sometimes we prefer maybe a God who prevents suffering, but that's not the God that we get or need. What the cross teaches us is that God's power, Taylor continues, is not the power to force human choices and end human pain. It is instead the power to pick up the shattered pieces and make something holy out of them, not from a distance, but right close up. So Jesus is who he said he was. Jesus is who people doubted he was. 
And this, this concept of shattered pieces reminds me of a type of Japanese art involving pottery. It's called kintsugi. And it's not just any pottery. The art includes taking broken pieces of pottery and putting them back together, but in a new way, together, fused with gold to keep them, the pieces together. And what emerges is something beautiful, perhaps stronger. And yet the reminder of what transpired is still there. The brokenness is still evident in that of what was, even if what has been forged ahead and anew is itself transformed. I think that's a quite an image for us about not just throwing out that those things that were discarded or we want to discard or even ourselves as being discarded or forgetting about what was or even just lingering in that past alone. Instead, this art is a tangible process of healing and resilience and even hope. Or to echo, uh, echo uh, Brown Taylor's words regarding this faith in Christ, a kind of picking up the shattered pieces and making or seeing the holiness in them and God is doing so with us. When we look at the Luke account of the resurrection, its arrival is at deep dawn, started in darkness when the great light came. That sounds a lot like Christmas, doesn't it? Walking in darkness and then a great light came upon them. As this discovery of God, who God is with us, loving us, unfolds. Thomas Merton, that famous 20th century monk, spoke of rising before dawn at the Gethsemane Abbey. He wrote, it is necessary for me to see the first point of light that begins to be dawn. Uh, to be dawn. It is necessary to be present alone at the resurrection of day in solemn silence at which the sun appears. For this moment, all the affairs of cities, governments, or war departments are seen to be the bickering of mice. I receive from the eastern woods the tall oaks, the one word, day. So these early folks here, on that first Easter Sunday, they found the tomb empty. And that verb, eurisco, is like eureka. Again, that same verb Luke employs earlier when he describes what the shepherds found in Bethlehem at Christmas. He finds here at Easter. That aha, revealing light, penetrating the darkness. And there is so much darkness for that light to seep into. We stand often in the shadow of death. We feel it sting, sometimes up close, sometimes from a distance. How can we not become consumed by death's shadows with sorrow, fear, and anger, even despair? All of those things can darken our days. Yet on Easter morning, we look to the east with sun rising, pushing back the shadows, with warmth and light emerging and bathing the earth. The shadows that recede might retreat from our view, but they might linger in our hearts and, of course, in our very soul. There we find God again and again, waiting for us. We walk with Jesus of Nazareth in Scripture as he meets all kinds of people. We listen as he speaks to the reality of their lives. We learn that Jesus also knows us and recognizes us, shares our struggles and our sorrow. God knows us inside and out, and even all of that, with that included, Jesus loves us. Kind of like the dawn breaking. And it's kind of easy as well to forget that kind of love. I know that forgetfulness. Sometimes it's hard to wrap our own minds around it. But we're people who strive to love and we're called to love in a way that God invites us into lets us, gives us permission to. That love which like hope rises like the sun. It's a love that soothes the sting of death. Love that keeps the light on and saves us. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Where we see dead ends, God doesn't. So we look to the God to help us get to where we need to go. This ending of sorts becomes a beginning and the way of Jesus opens way to ultimate life. Death does not have the final word. Love has that word. During Holy Week each year, we navigate this roller coaster of consolation and desolation, and then we find consolation again. We focused on the last week of Jesus' life, his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, and his suffering just a few short days later, and a couple days ago. It serves as not only a reminder of the torment Jesus endured, 
but of the hope and the story of the resurrection of Jesus. We can look at this world and find desolation after desolation. We could look at our own lives and do the same. It is enough to make us feel defeated, even hopeless. And yet, Frederick Buckner tells us that the worst thing is never the last thing. And let's not forget about Wendell Berry, a Christian writer and agriculturist who wrote about half a century ago these words about a clover. In the dark of the moon, in flying snow, in the dead of winter, war spreading, families dying, the world in danger, I walk the rocky hillside sowing clover. And from Parker Palmer, we don't always see the way opening before us, we only see the way closing behind us. Good Friday saw the way close behind us with no clear path forward, but Easter reveals the way before us. Today is Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. For the past two millennia, Christians have been giving witness to this seminal event of the Christian faith giving whatever is occurring in our own lives, this year's celebration focuses us on the importance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ once again and what the resurrection represents. God boldly proclaims that violence does not have the last word. With the resurrection of Jesus, God declared that ultimately all things can become new. In the midst of our current realities, this is the clarion call for, for us that he is risen. But it is not enough to simply rejoice on Sunday alone. We can make art. We can tend to our gardens, sow clover, pick up the pieces because the pieces have been picked up for us and accept this kind of love that points us to a blessed hereafter as well as living with Jesus and proclaiming and living into the kingdom of heaven here and now. The resurrection is a call to a life following the risen Christ a life of hope, joy, peacemaking, generosity, and the love of Christ. May you have a blessed Easter and a life following the risen Lord. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And we sing that very song before we close today. He lives because death does not have a final that final answer, but life and love does. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. As we go forth this Resurrection Sunday, we are Easter people beyond this hour, beyond this day, behind this, beyond this space. We have come to the cross. We bear our cross now as we go forward, not to stay there at the cross, but to carry it forward as we live as Easter people into the world here and now, because Jesus lives and Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. So may we go forth through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Happy Easter.